Hi guys and welcome to a brand new economy week. This time I'm so excited to be comparing the biggest three European low-cost carriers, Ryanair, EasyJet and Norwegian. So I'm on my second flight of five for the day, currently on Norwegian from Stockholm to Budapest. So in this review, we're gonna check out what their Norwegian service is like, of course, how it compares to the other carriers. I've flown Norwegian many times. It's always fun to get new experiences and uh, compare with my past ones. And of course, I can't wait to take this on video. So come with me this way to see how Norwegian is. As you guys know, I've flown Norwegian a lot more than I've flown with Ryanair and EasyJet. This is mainly because they're very convenient living in Scandinavia, but also because they really offer some of the best value you can get as far as airlines go. For my itinerary with them, I flew from Gothenburg to Stockholm and connected on to Budapest. So I started my day in Gothenburg, boarding a full flight to Stockholm. Unfortunately, what happens on these airlines when you don't pre-select a seat is that you often get put in a middle seat, which is usually my worst nightmare. Luckily, this flight was only 45 minutes, so it was okay. Even though I was one of the last to board and I was super stressed, I immediately felt that there was a peaceful ambiance on board. What you're hearing now is Norwegian's brand new boarding music, which I absolutely love, and I think it's such a good investment into their brand. They also have mood lighting and the Boeing Sky interior, which doesn't hurt either. As opposed to Ryanair and EasyJet, Norwegian has Wi-Fi on board. Not only that, but the Wi-Fi is free for all passengers. They also have TV shows and movies that you can stream to your device, many of which are free as well. This is insane for a low-cost airline, especially given the most intra-European legacy carriers like Lufthansa, SAS, British Airways, or Air France don't even have Wi-Fi on their intra-European fleets yet. Unfortunately, the flight was delayed, so we arrived at the gate 20 minutes after scheduled arrival. This freaked me out a bit and wasn't really a great start to the day, given that I only had a 45-minute connection in Stockholm, and in that time, I had to change terminals from Terminal 4 to Terminal 5. Luckily, Arlanda recently introduced a connecting bus, which makes it easier to get through terminals, and at least you don't have to go through security. It still is a bit of a pain to connect here. Luckily, I made it to my next flight just on time. This flight was extra awesome because I had a whole road to myself. What was really great about this economy week was that I actually had one flight on each airline that was packed and one where I got a whole road to myself. So I really got to compare the best possible experience and the worst possible experience. I'd say the load factor on this flight was maybe 50% or so. I immediately noticed upon boarding that the flight attendants seemed quite impatient and even rude. They didn't greet passengers and just seemed to be a little bit nonchalant. So the legroom and seat design on Norwegian is actually quite good. I'd say it's comparable to most intra-European flights. You don't feel too crammed, but it also obviously isn't as generous as the likes of JetBlue and Alaska in the US. On this flight, since it was so empty, the Wi-Fi was even faster, which made it so easy to surf around the internet. And again, it was free for the whole flight, which is just crazy.
One of the interesting distinctions between the low-cost carriers in Europe and the US is that there tends to be a very different perception of them. In the US, JetBlue, Southwest, and Alaska, which are low-cost airlines, are considered to be the nicer airlines, and they're the ones people really want to fly. Meanwhile, in Europe, low-cost airlines have the perception of being the mean airlines, the ones that people want to avoid. There are eight emergency exits on this aircraft. Two at the back, two at the front, and four exits over the wings. To open the overwing exit, pull the red handle down and leave the aircraft by sliding down the rear of the wing. While that is sometimes the case, I don't think it's necessarily always true. However, on this flight, I think the crew really weren't too professional or nice. One example was that a man was sleeping on an entire row, so he'd put his shoes up on the seat. Instead of waking him up kindly and asking him to put them down, the flight attendant started yelling, Sir, sir, no shoes on the seat, no shoes on the seat, and just woke him up by doing that, which I don't think is the most pleasant way to be woken up. Also, when there wasn't service, I could hear the flight attendant kidding with another flight attendant in the galley, and they were swearing quite a lot and quite loudly, which I, again, I don't think is the most professional thing to do. On this flight, I ordered one cup of coffee, which was 30 SEK, so it's about 3 euros. I got it half full, so not great value, but it tasted fine at least. Norwegian also has some decent food options on board for those who are hungry, and you can see the menu here. I think the prices are also quite reasonable given how much they could charge for food, especially on longer flights. How were my flights with Norwegian? Well, um, I think they were a little, at least my second flight was not as good as most of my other flights I've had with them, but they did have free Wi-Fi and since the flight was just semi-full, it was so fast, so I could use it. I was procrastinating. I have like 70 pages of scholarly work to read. But yeah, it's overall, I mean, the free Wi-Fi is really what draws you to Norwegian and it's a great aspect to have. It's quite shocking, just as on the other airlines, that like you don't get free water or juice or things like that. Um, but that's the low cost model that these airlines go by. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Of course, check Norwegian out because they are a great option for travel inside Europe and subscribe for much more like this. I'd also like to remind you to check out my Patreon down below so you can support future economy weeks if you'd like. For more information, we 
So overall, flying Norwegian usually is quite a pleasant experience. Although you still get the low cost vibe with random seat assignments if you don't pay and sometimes customer unfriendly policies, they do have free Wi-Fi and entertainment, a good food selection, nice seats and beautiful cabins. I'd even say that the boarding music really contributes to a nice atmosphere on board. So overall, you can count on me flying Norwegian again, especially since they're the only low-cost airline in Europe that has a good loyalty program. I'll link an entire post I did on that below, it's worth a read at how you can maximize it, and that definitely sets Norwegian apart. So I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope you'll all give Norwegian a try if you haven't already. Uh, and no, as always, I paid for this flight, this is not sponsored. but. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up, comment below what you thought, and subscribe for the next Economy Week episode and many more Economy Weeks after this. And until I see you all next time, fly safe.